Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video I just want to make a shorter video of this QIT KTA16 radio and I already made a longer video. It's about an hour long unfortunately but it goes over everything I can think of so it is probably worth your while. Just go ahead and look in the description there and you'll see a timeline where you can actually go through it a little bit faster to certain points that you wish to know about. In this video I'm just going to quickly go over the radio itself, the features, the functions, things like that. Many of your questions will be answered by using this user's manual. This is a VHF transceiver because it uses the frequencies in the VHF band and it's a transceiver because it receives and transmits audio. A lot of airband radios they just are basically a radio that receives frequencies or receives audio but you can't transmit on those radios so this is really good for backup radio in the cockpit and this manual explains everything pretty well i think it's written in good english there's one mistake in here that i found that we can talk about later but let's go to the technical specs really quick here you can see all the frequency range which is within the aviation band some weather this is just NOAA weather radio stations not the weather for your airports it does have the channel spacing a lot of people i think are confused about that or don't see the 8.33 kilohertz. It is in there. I'll show you that. It's just not in the software, but it is on the physical radio that you can fix or set manually. You can have up to 200 channels, which I mentioned in my other video. We won't go through all of this. Uh, standard, maybe that's important if you're a ham radio operator, you know a lot about radios. This antenna impedance is the normal 50 ohm. And it does say antenna connector is a BNC type. Well, it's not. I think it's an SMA male. Like, don't have the memorize, but it's uh, inner threads with a uh, protruding wire there that goes into your radio. This is the actual BNC adapter that I use. I'll just go ahead and put that in because I just like to have an antenna that I can put on and off real quick, which a BNC connector allows you to do that very fast and easily. It's quite light, has a 1200 milliamp hour battery and weighs about 240 grams. On the other side here, you can see that it does have the output power of six watts PEP, and that's actually your peak envelope power. People get that confused with other types of power because I did do a power test and it does not go to up to six watts, but that's in line with what the Sportis PJ2 Plus is. So you're not losing anything here. In any case, you're actually gaining because this is outputting more power than the Sportis PJ2 Plus radio. 1.8 watts on CW, which I believe is the continuous wave, which I say I believe because this radio doesn't do Morse code or continuous wave, which is what CW is. Other specs here, just so you know about your radio, the noise ratio, and all of that. Let's see, anything else? Sensitivity goes through the sensitivity, the squelch thresholds, and spurious uh, transmissions there. So that's basically the, the manual that I want to talk about. Again, this is very handy. Make sure you know it. Let's go ahead and talk about the radio. The battery here, you just squeeze here on the top of the battery here, these two sides, and it'll just come out real easy. It is a, again, uh, this says 2000 milliamp hour, which that's another mistake in the manual because the manual says it's a 1200 milliamp hour battery, but you actually get a little bit more. It's probably because because then maybe this uh, manual is copied and pasted from a similar radio that looks like this, which is the KT-8 radio, I think. If you need to buy another battery, just look for this model number, QB-8R, probably can find it on AliExpress. And so that's it. One thing I don't like about it is that this comes with a belt clip that's attached instead of on the radio. I like that better because if you get another battery pack, hopefully it comes with another belt clip too, because if not, then it's gonna be a pain in the butt if you like to use the belt clip. You can probably put a piece of Velcro there if you wanna stick it to stuff if you want, or it's very hard for me, at least I couldn't find spare belt clip and just have to kind of live with it, I guess. Other than that, there's no USB-C charging. Unfortunately, you're just gonna to have to use the docking station that comes with it. And again, here you can see this is the KT-A16 radio with the power of six watts, which you don't get. I mean, it's PEP, but the practical watts I'm talking about, I think it's the VSWR is around two watts and there's your frequency ranges there as well. Put that back on there. And oh, by the way, this piece of metal here is the heat sink where your ground plane to as well as your radio. If you're not a ham radio user, then you can just ignore what I just said. On the radio itself, you have a cover here that covers the headphone jack, basically mic and speaker. And this also doubles as your programming ports here for your programming cable. In the software video, you can see what that's all about. We'll go ahead and turn the radio on and let's talk about the buttons on the side here, right? So the, ma the manual explains this. This is the VFO slash MR key, the PTT button here in red, push to talk, backlit button, and the monitor button. They call it the ASQ key, but it doesn't have anything to do with the ASQ or the automatic squelch there. So let's first talk about the VFO button here. So if you have channels on here, then this is going to be a little bit useful. If you don't, then this really isn't going to do anything. But since I do have channels in there, right now I'm listening to a channel, ND8, which I'm far away, won't pick it up. But in any case, let's just say I wanted to type in a specific frequency. You can't just type on here because if you do, you'll be typing in channel buttons instead, channel numbers instead to go to a specific channel real quick. Like let's say the first channel 011, for example, channel 11. You can't get out of there unless you push the VFO button, which is this. So go ahead and push it. So I pushed it. Now you can see the screen changed. 
push it back, push it again. It changed now to the VFO mode, which is the variable frequency oscillator, which allows you to manually type in any frequency within the range. Let's go ahead and do 122.000 again. And now you're listening to 122.000 and you can transmit on that station as well. PTT push to talk, that's pretty self-explanatory. Push it to talk, let go when you're done talking. This is the backlight button, let's go ahead and push that. It just basically turns the screen off if you want to keep the screen off. Push it on just to look at the screen if you'd like. It does not turn the radio off. It just takes the screen and turn it off. And you can kind of save a little bit of battery, I guess, in that way. This button is the monitor button. If you go ahead and push it, you're just going to constantly listen to that frequency. As you can see, it's just static because I don't have an antenna. I'm in the basement and there's nothing in the area, All right, So push it to turn it back off. Sometimes that's useful if you're not really hearing much on the radio or if your squelch is up too high, then you can just push that and just completely open up that frequency to continuously listen to it. All right, let's go ahead and do talk about this knob. This is the channel knob here, which is very convenient if you don't want to push these arrow buttons up and down because you can do that to either cycle through the frequencies through the 8.33 kilohertz step. And if you use the knob, it'll do the same thing within that step range of 8.33 kilohertz, okay? Let's go ahead and put it back on channel mode here, on channel A here, A, B, C, by the way. And we go back through here. So this knob, it just continuously spins. There's no, thing, there's no limit there. Once you exceed the amount of channels that you have saved, it'll just cycle back through the beginning again. As you can see, it went back to zero and started over again. You can do the same thing with these up and down arrows, obviously, with your channels now, since you're in channel mode and not the VFO mode, right? All of the settings here I went through on the software, so I won't go through them again. But one thing that everyone is kind of talking about is where can you change the step frequency? So if, as you can see, you can just push the up button and you get to menu one, which is the step. Or if you exit out and you hit menu, menu, and then hit one, you're going to go to menu step one. Menu three is going to send you to three. If you want, if you have these memories or some of these, I mean, I guess they're written on here too. So if you wanted to quickly go to the BCL, backlight, just hit menu nine, instantly go there. You can change the setting as you wish. So that's how the this all functions together. All of these green lettering here corresponds to which menu item it is. Okay, so let's go to menu. Go back to one, which is a step, because a lot of people want to know about how to change this to the 8.33 kilohertz. You can't change this in software, but you can change it here manually on the radio. Click menu to select that because you want to change it and then you're free to change it to whatever you want. We're going to go back to 8.33 because that's what you need for the aviation band. I'm going to show you guys how to set this radio up for our aviation. Click menu to go back up to here and basically it's saved that way. One thing that I just realized guys is if you turn this radio off and turn it back on and you go to menu and check your step, it resets it back to 2.5K for some reason. So I do not like that. That's one thing I don't like so far. But if you keep that in mind, at least you can always go back. But in general, that's not really a deal breaker for me anyway, because I just have this, you know, all the channels set up anyway, just like that. And I'm never really cycling through, through the steps anyway, even on the frequency mode here. So just keep that in mind if that bothers you. One thing that I need to inform you of, which is not in here, is the narrow band or wide band, let's double check, is narrow band or wide band setting in here? I do not see it. Okay, so what's important is in software, make sure that this radio is set up in narrow band. I'll show you guys here on the screen a little bit about narrow band because narrow band uses half the bandwidth of a wide band, which, you know, aviation uses narrow band and typically in ham radio, I think most people are using wide band. So just make sure this is on narrow band so that you can get nice, clear signals. You're going to send out a clear signal to other radios because they're going to be on narrow band or at least aviation band, aviation radios will. And you'll receive your transmissions a lot clearer in narrow band because they're transmitting on narrow band. The narrow, normal wide band spacing is 25 kilohertz, but narrow band is the 12.5 so if you're a narrow band that's good because that's what all the radios are going to be using and basically narrow banding essentially it doubles the number of available frequencies in the vhf world basically so that's why airband uses it we have a certain amount of frequencies that we can use and so having that smaller narrow band bandwidth there will give you more available channels to talk on and in the aviation world, the 8.33 kilohertz band spacing is a standard one used in aviation, like I mentioned. So that's what you want to use if you're going to be doing that uh, spacing or step. If you're in VFO mode and you want to cycle through your frequencies, you're going to be needing to use 8.33 kilohertz, which is makes sense that it's on the radio. Unfortunately, it's not in the software, but I think the ham radio does not. The KT8 version does not give you that option, but I don't own that. So I'm just assuming 
By the way, down here in the software, I did change from the model number KT-A16 to just Delta Bravo, which is what you know my channel is named after. So if you go through here, you can just go through and manually adjust things as you wish. Everything on here is the same as in the software. So there's no reason to kind of go through here now again and go through each one and what they do. Stay away from, I mean, you can delete channels and save channels if you want, but it's a little bit difficult to do that in here. It's better to do it in the software. All of these other things like SFT-D, which is the shift direction. If you're a ham operator, you know what all these are. The offsets the tmr now that's something you could use which is explained in the manual and my squelch is set to six you can also change the scalp squelch with these buttons here the asterisk or the pound button look right here you see asq now asq is different than the squelch am so this is automatic squelch if you're starting to hear a lot of static or something you don't want to or a lot of interference you can just go ahead and keep turning the squelch up like this as you can see it keeps going up if you want to go back down to lower the squelch just hit the pound key and that'll take you back the other direction back into the menus here basically everything else. I think here's the reset. I don't think you can reset it on the software, but you can reset the radio here inside of the menu itself. Now, since I'm in channel mode, I can go ahead and scan through all of the channels I have pre-saved by just holding down the scan button. Let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, it's scanning the down direction. Let's go the other way. If you push up, now it's going to scan all the channels in the up direction, right? So one, two, three, four, five, sequential order and then backwards this way. If you want to stop the squelch, go ahead and hit the squelch button again. And in the settings, eh, let's see here. Does it have it in here? I don't know. There's a squelch setting for two CO and something else, but that's what you can set up in the settings. Basically you can scan for, once it hears a frequency, it'll stay on that frequency for a certain amount of time. But there's another setting to just stay on that channel when you hear, if you didn't hear something, that's all mentioned here in the manual. Oh, right here, by the way, is SLQ AM squelch. AM band squelch level settings, squelch FM. I don't know why it has FM and AM. This is basically an AM radio because aviation bands are in AM. So I think a lot of this uh, stuff in the radio is related to the KT-8 radio, which is more of a ham radio. TO, CO, or SE, search mode scanning, carrier mode scanning, and time mode scanning. You can look those up or, you know, to see what each one does and choose your preference. One other thing that I noticed in the manual that is incorrect is on page five here, it says that a quick toggle of the pound sign will alternate power levels from high power to low power, which is contradicting to the previous page four right here, or no, sorry, previous page two, where it mentions that the asterisk in the pound key does the ASQ up, ASQ down and locks the keypad if obviously right here, you know, the pound key, if you hold that down for a couple of seconds, it's going to lock the keypad, but it does not lock the PTT. So keep that in mind. That's good. Or the monitor button, as I know. Other than that, this works pretty good as far as explaining what each of the settings does. Oh, there it is. Explains you the time operation, carry operation, and search operation. So there you have it to explain a little bit deeper what each of your squelch settings does in your software so that you can pick the right one. Let's do this lock real quick. If I hold it down, you can see that icon up there shows that the keypad is locked. You can not do the monitor, but you can do the PTT. So we're going to take that off by just holding it down again and it goes away. Now the manual also explains what these here on the screen are. So noise intensity is the N and the signal strength is the S. So the signal strength of a signal coming in or out is shown there and the noise level as well when you transmit or receive. It's kind of helpful to know. So if you start seeing a lot of noise going up, you can start turning your squelch up or down. Basically, this is what I use. And I think I normally leave it around 10 or 11, but everybody might be different. Every radio might be different. What's interesting here is I keep seeing this mic, this audio changing. Every time I talk, it's like picking up my freak, my voice or any sounds, but it's not transmitting. It's just kind of maybe telling you maybe how loud the environment is, which I guess is kind of useful. Let's see if I clap how high it goes. 99. Okay. So you can kind of see maybe how loud the environment is, maybe your background noise, if that's important to you. It's kind of neat, I guess, but it's not really a useful feature. On the screen here, some of the stuff here, uh, let's see if I push and you can see this top button here. This is the sound pressure indicator kind of showing you your signal strength of your, your audio that you're transmitting. Some other stuff that's not on the radio that you don't see here that's on here though is like your higher low power indicator. Now you can't change your power on the radio, but you can change it in software. Just make it all high you'll be within legal limits. And then let's see, I don't have the Vox function enabled, so you won't see that. But basically if it senses audio, then it's going to start transmitting. So I turn that off because I never know how loud it's going to be in the plane at any given time. I don't want to transmit just background noise. Okay. Main frequency, secondary frequencies are here. And that's basically how I have this set up. Let's go to TMR really quick. And I want to set this to MAB. 
because I like to listen to my main frequency up top, secondary frequency, which I generally always have on emergency just to kind of listen for. If somebody ever chimes in, I can hear, hear them instantly without having to tune to them all the time. And then I'm always primary listening to the A. If I hit the exit button, this will cycle through your primary and secondary frequencies on here. So if you have the solid triangle on the first one there, that's gonna be your primary one that you're gonna transmit on. If the solid triangle is on the second one or third one, that's the primary one you're gonna be talking on. So it makes sense, right? The unsolid ones are just the listening ones, the standby frequencies that's waiting for a signal for you to listen for. And so let's say I wanted to manually type in a frequency, that's where I leave the secondary frequency down here at the bottom, channel C basically. And there you can just type in anything you want and you can just it's instantly listen and transmit on that frequency. So that's how I have it set up. You can set it up however you want, whatever is most convenient to you. But this is how I set it up for best practicality or ease of use in the cockpit. And it's pretty simple there. I like that everything that's on the screen is very easy to see. Up here at the top is your, what does it call it anyway? Yeah, it doesn't say, but whatever's up here at the top is basically what you're currently listening to in big letters so that you can visually see better what frequency you're on or what you're going to be talking to or listening to, okay? Voltage indicator, that's nice so that you know when your battery is about to die. Right now we're at 8 volts, is a fully charged battery. So that's helpful to know. You also have the battery indicator up here. So you have the picture and the actual physical voltage. I don't think you can change that. I doubt you can change that, but it's going to be there, right? Here top left, that's just your current transmit and receive status, which you see on here. So I don't know. I don't want to go through all this because you can read yourself, right? We don't have any offsets, but ham radio stuff, you can tinker with that I guess but you shouldn't be doing that because you need a license and you sh you're not allowed to be able to transmit on the aviation bands without a radio license as well which is covered by the plane or the airport that has the plane right what I like about this menu is maybe a lot of people buy this radio without knowing how to use it maybe non-aviators or ham radio operators but it does have warnings here just because you can program in a channel doesn't mean you can automatically you know use that frequency and transmitting on frequencies that you're not authorized to operate is illegal you will be in trouble and they will find you if you're using this radio to enter interrupt air traffic and it's a serious offense like it mentions here and but if you're just listening totally legal generally as far as i know i don't know anywhere where you, it's illegal to listen in the united states to just basic air traffic so so anyways guys i think that covers generally this radio itself hopefully this video is a little bit easier to get through and answers any of your questions that you might have if you have any other questions put them down in the comment section and i'll try to answer them myself directly and we'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to see more about it, just let me know as well. And I'll think about seeing what I can do for you. Thank you.